What's going on out there? Welcome in to the Impact Lounge. You are in the number one place to be for the Impact Wrestling fan. This is the Cool Factor Podcast. I'm your host, T.W. Uh, as I mentioned, if you saw the pod last week, flying solo for a little while. BQ has some scheduling conflicts. So until he's ready to get back with the program on a regular schedule, you're just going to have this beautiful face and wonderful voice right here bringing you your Impact Wrestling thoughts and opinions, all right? So I'm actually uh, uh, taking a note from BQ on this one. I'm doing this one BQ style in the car. I'm in the midst of a ridiculously busy weekend. I'm on the way home from work right now. And so this is honestly the only time I got to get you guys a podcast. So let's do it. Let's get into it. All right, here we go. Um, Impact nailed the go-home show for Rebellion last night. I thought they absolutely nailed it. Um, you know, look, the, the main job of a go-home show is to get you ready, get you excited, get you prepared for the upcoming big pay-per-view. And damn if they didn't do that. You know, the number one story here is, you know, how are we leading up to the title versus title main event of Rebellion the Rich Swan versus Kenny Omega super match that'll be called by none other than Mauro Ranallo. And everybody's excited for it, man. Everybody who's an Impact fan, you're either excited for it or you're dreading it. And if you're dreading it, I totally understand why. I totally get it. And I really don't blame you. I don't blame you one bit. You know, it is what it is. Because, listen, nobody with a brain thinks that Rich Swan is winning the AEW World Championship. I would confidently bet every dime to my name that Rich Swan is not winning the AEW Championship. Why? Because Rich Swan's name hasn't been mentioned on AEW television at all. And there's no chance that Tony Khan is going to let Someone whose name hasn't even been mentioned on his television program carry his world title. So you, me, and everybody else, we know that Kenny Omega is winning the world championship from Rich Swan. Now, the interesting part here is how do we get there? And probably more importantly, what's next? Where do we go from here? And by the way, Where do we go from here is a huge question, right? After Rich Swan loses the Impact World Championship to Kenny Omega, that's compelling television. You got to tune in to see what happens next after Rich Swan loses the world title to Kenny Omega. What does Impact do with no world title on their show? Do they set up some sort of method to get it back? Eventually, obviously, they're going to need to get it back. And that's the biggest question that I think we all really wonder is how and who are going to be the means to get the Impact World title back from Kenny Omega. Because once again, we all know Rich Swan is losing the title to Kenny Omega on Saturday. I, 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 don't, I don't have any shred of doubt that that's what's going to happen on Saturday. And it's not going to stop me from watching it right? But if you're dreading it, I don't really think you should see it that way. I'm telling you. A lot of people are looking at this from, you know, a kayfabe story uh, standpoint, right? They're like, oh, AEW is burying impacts. And my, my thing is how? How? Because honestly, with the exception of the kayfabe storyline, right? The, the storyline angle that AEW's world champion is beating Impact's world champion, what is AEW really gaining from this relationship? Impact has had a sharp increase in interest. Now, people that are uh, numbers, beans counters, numbers people, right? They'll look at the ratings and say, well, the ratings haven't gone up. So there's no measurable numbers, nothing tangible to say that Impact is really doing any benefits from this relationship. But I say just the opposite. 
the reality is most of the people who you're talking about impact with that you weren't talking about impact with before you're talking about the impact AEW relationship and that's what show business is man you talk about something but you got to tune in to see it you got to pay attention to it and they're making you pay attention even if it's something that you think they're doing wrong if there's something you think they could be doing a lot better you're still talking about it and in a lot of cases you're tuning in to see it and that's impacts whole their 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 whole game here now the real end game is they're trying to get their pay-per-view buys up they're trying to make some money so if the pay-per-view is a flop then you could say the AEW impact partnership has been a flop but I don't see it. I, I, I don't see it being a flop because people are interested to see how this is going to play out. They got Mar Ronaldo calling the match. People are going to be interested in seeing that. And a lot of people just like Kenny Omega. They like Kenny Omega matches. And so you can sit down. You don't have to go anywhere or do anything special. You can order right on your Fight TV app and you watch the Kenny Omega Rich Swan match. And if you do that, then Impact wins. That's the win. That's the whole ball game here. That's the whole ball game is they're trying to generate more interest in their product and more interest in their pay-per-views, things that people will pay money to see. And it looks like that's what's happening. And if, and if that's what's happening, then that's the whole benefit for Impact. And by the way, if Kenny Omega wins, well, when Kenny Omega beats Rich Swan for the Impact World Championship, well, guess what? You've just extended the storyline. Now you got to keep having conversations about how is Impact going to get their world title back or how stupid Impact looks for letting AEW win their world championship. But eventually you got to come around to who's going to be the person from Impact that is going to get that title off of Kenny Omega. And so Impact is benefiting tremendously from being a part of this storyline. And I believe that anybody who tells you that Impact is not benefiting from this is just people that don't normally watch the show. Again, I totally understand the viewpoint that Impact is not looking strong here, right? Like Impact is not being made to look like AEW's equal, but guess what? You didn't think Impact was AEW's equal before they started doing this. And Impact winning some matches against AEW is not gonna make you think that Impact's AEW's equal. AEW is on TNT, a big network. Impact is on Access TV, a smaller network. AEW does their shows in front of fans because they own the damn amphitheater where they do the show. Impact is doing their show in Skyway Studios and according to what Scott Demore said on the Busted Open Radio show the other day, there is no end in sight to Impact doing shows without fans. They're trying to wait until it's full green lights everywhere for people to come safe back out, which I don't blame them from a safety standpoint, from a product standpoint. You know, the product has suffered um, from not having fans in attendance, but it is what it is. It is what it is. But the idea that Impact winning matches against AEW, Impact wrestlers winning matches against AEW wrestlers was going to somehow make you think that Impact and AEW are equal companies, that's ridiculous. Impact's not as popular as AEW. You don't care as much about what happens in Impact as you care about what happens in AEW. It doesn't make the news wires as much. The general public doesn't care about what happens in Impact as much as they care about what happens in AEW. But this Impact AEW Association is changing that. Think if some, by some chance, by some swindling backdoor deal making, Rich Swan were to win the AEW World Championship. People would lose their minds and not in a good way because they wouldn't be saying, oh, that was such a great match. They'll be saying, how could AEW 
be so stupid as to let the champion of a promotion that people don't care about win their world title. That's what people would be saying. And when Kenny Omega wins the title for Rich Swan, they're going to say, oh, Impact's getting buried by AEW, which to me is ridiculous. It's just ridiculous. You can't bury somebody by working with them. You don't bury a company by lending your talent to them. Again, AEW is lending Impact the main attraction for Impact's pay-per-view that Impact is making the money off of. That's not a burial. That's not That's not how burials work. If you wanted to bury Impact if you're AEW, you just don't talk about them at all. You let them to con you let them continue to exist in anonymity. To wallow in their mediocrity. That's what you would do if you wanted to bury them. You might make little jokes, crack little jokes about their product on your show. But you don't lend your talent to appear on their show. All these things are conversation starters. When Tony Khan comes on to Impact and does these uh, these paid ads where he craps on Impact and has you know different AEW people come on and crap on Impact, these are conversation starters. These are things that make you talk about Impact where you otherwise would not be. So like the idea that you know, Impact is getting bullied here by AEW is crazy. I think that's one of those times when we as wrestling fans, you know, the fun thing about wrestling is when we can be made to doubt. They call it suspending our disbelief, right? When we can be made to doubt what is real and what is scripted. What's scripted and what's not, right? And I think there's a lot of that going on here with people talking about the, this idea of AEW burying Impact. Again, if AEW wanted to bury Impact, they wouldn't answer the phone. That's how you bury them. You don't bury somebody by giving them TV time, right? Uh, and and I'm, I'm saying that point in reference to, you know, if, if there's a wrestler on TV who's losing matches, people will say, oh, he's getting buried. Like, no, you don't bury somebody by giving them TV time every week. That's not burial. You bury people by just not acknowledging them at all, right? So, you know, but this idea that Impact is not benefiting from this relationship with AEW to me is ridiculous. I think they may not be benefiting from a storyline standpoint. I totally get that, and I agree. But from a business standpoint, right? And we can all see the value in business whenever Vince McMahon does something, regardless of how crappy it makes the on television product. But we can't seem to find the business value in Impact Wrestling working with a much more visible, much more respected company, right? We can't seem to understand how that's a good business move. Go figure. So, as I was saying before, the big question I think we all have, right, is how are we going to get to, is there going to be some sort of storyline for Rich Swan losing this title to Kenny Omega? And Rich Swan came out to cut a promo in the ring, basically called Kenny Omega out, said, let's come out here and do this right now. And Kenny Omega comes onto the video board. They cut a promo back and forth, blah, 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 blah. Who cares? But here's where it got interesting. Moose, who we have not seen on Impact TV since losing the TNA world title in a unification match to Rich Swan, he appeared. And they had some words back and forth. But the main point was Rich Swan was told by Moose, you better not lose those titles. And to me, that laid the seeds to tell me that Moose is going to be involved in the outcome of the match. Moose may cost Rich Swan the match. And if Moose doesn't cost Rich Swan the match, and actually, I had predicted this a few weeks ago, what may happen here is Rich Swan losing to Kenny Omega 
And then Moose being so furious at Rich Swan that Moose just annihilates Rich Swan, annihilates Rich Swan, and then he challenges Kenny Omega for the Impact World Title, and Moose is the man to win the title back from Kenny Omega. If you do that, if you're Impact, I think you've made a, you've made a star in Moose, and. I don't know that that's their plan because to be honest, if you look at what they've done with Moose since this regime has taken over, they don't appear to have any sort of long-term faith in Moose, just from, from what I can see. Moose looks amazing. He's in the best shape of his career, probably the best shape of his whole life. He slowed his promos down to a very methodic, uh, methodic. Yeah, yeah that's, that's right. Oh, wait. wait, wait. Is that, is that the right? Is methodic a word? Yeah. <laughs> anyway, he slowed his promos down to a very deliberate tone so you know what he's trying to say. That really emphasizes a real psycho kind of uh, <laughs> speech pattern. And it's totally revamped Moose's character. I like it. You know, I like it. You know, Moose, a big athletic guy. He was somebody, like a lot of wrestlers, who was searching for what character he has that really works. And he's finally found something that really works. You know, he's a, a cold, calculated killer. You know, a, a little psychopath, very angry. Moose is on a roll right now. And if there was ever a time to make him your feature player, this is it. And this is the storyline to do it. So I think Moose is gonna end up getting involved in the decision between uh, Rich Swan and Kenny Omega. And I think that he'll have something to say about that. And then coming out of that, where we'll go is into a program between Rich Swan and Moose to determine who will be the next person to challenge Kenny Omega, which Moose should win. All right. What else happened on, on, this, on the Go Home episode of Impact? Well, we found out who Jordan Grace's mystery partner is going to be for the upcoming tag team match at Rebellion. Um, I thought it was going to be Taylor Wilde, which I also thought was pretty weird because they had already advertised Taylor Wilde's return. So if you're advertising Taylor Wilde's return, why would you put her as the mystery partner? And it turns out the mystery partner was Rachel Ellering. And I think that's very interesting. I've seen Rachel Ellering wrestle a couple of times uh, in NXT and the Mae Young Classic. And, you know, why not, right? Why not? The, the great thing about Impact right now, Impact is a place where people can come and really develop. And wrestlers need to develop. I just finished talking about Moose, right? And how he's going through phases and stages in his character development until he found something that really appears to be working. And that's where he's at now. And Rachel Ellering is somebody who, you know, I don't know her character at all, right? I don't know her character at all. I've seen her wrestle a couple of times, so I know she can be competent in the ring, but I don't really know, you know, I don't really know what to expect. But to me, that's good, that's a good thing, right? It's a fresh slate. I'm not expecting her to go in there and wow me and be superwoman. You know, I'm not expecting her to go in there and be Sasha Banks, the greatest women's wrestler alive. I'm not expecting her to go in there and, 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 and steal the show. I just wanna see what she can do. I wanna see who Rachel Ellering is. You know, I wanna see what's this character? What, what is a match with Rachel Ellering like? So I'm looking forward to it. I think it's great for the roster. And then we still have Taylor Wilde coming back in. So just like that, right? You've just injected two new, and Taylor Wilde has, hasn't even appeared on TV, by the way. But you've just injected two new people into the Knockouts roster. Creates new matchups. Creates the potential for new storylines. It gives us a chance to see people on TV that we haven't seen before. Speaking of seeing people on TV that we haven't seen before, I don't know if anybody caught Matt Stryker have a little line that slipped on commentary uh, last night where he said, I'm ready for rebellion. I'm ready for new faces. And I said, oh, oh, 
Oh, ready for new faces, huh? Now, did he let that line slip? No, he's probably fed that line so that we, the internet trolls, would pick it up and we would talk about it and say, what new faces, right? But again, it's just another thing for us to talk about, for us to get excited about looking forward to this upcoming pay-per-view. Impact really does a great job of creating a buzz on short notice, right? Because they'll give you a couple of weeks where the show is like, what the hell is going on? And then they'll do something that makes you go, huh, I need to see what's going on, right? So, uh, so you know, Impact, great job so far, right? Um, now, let's talk about the knockouts title match with Deanna Perrazzo defending against Tennille Dashwood. This one's tough. This one's tough because Tennille's not a babyface and Deanna's certainly not a babyface. And Tennille's not even, she doesn't even have great momentum right now, right? Like she, it's, it's not like she's been doing anything on TV that's really been making me, you know, want to see her segments or see her in the ring or, you know, nothing on social media, right? Like she's really just a body to fill in right now. And that's a shame because she's super talented, but you know, I don't know if creative doesn't plan anything good for her, or I don't know if she's not that involved with her, you know, with her character and what's going on in the impact, but there really hasn't been a whole lot to be excited about in terms of Tennille Dashwood and Impact Wrestling. Now, again, she's a good wrestler and she's going to put on a good match whenever she's in the ring. That part, you don't ever have to worry about. But, you know, wrestling is about stories and characters. You need stories and you need characters, right? Like Deanna Perrazzo has established that she's this cocky champion who's an excellent wrestler, you know, not afraid to cheat, will talk about how good she is and get in the ring and back it up, right? And when Deanna Perrazzo walks out, I said this a few weeks ago, she has this walk about her that's like, oh, I wanna see her get punched in the face. And that's a good thing, right? That's a good thing. Because she's a good heel. She has established herself as the bad guy, right? She's established herself as the person I wanna see get beat. She's established herself as somebody who I wanna see get shut up. So this uh, Tennille Dashwood versus Deanna Perrazzo match feels like just a minor formality until Deanna Perrazzo gets her next thing. And speaking of Deanna Perrazzo and what might potentially be her next thing, she was on the Busted Open radio show the other day and she talked about wanting to be a part of this whole forbidden door conversation. And I was so glad that she got to say this in an open forum because much like a lot of Impact fans feel like the Impact and AEW relationship has been very one-sided, a lot of wrestlers feel that way too. I heard Eddie Edwards say something in a promo a few weeks ago about how one-sided he feels like this has been. And so there's a lot of people who feel that way. And I'm gonna talk a little bit later about what I think Impact needs to do about it. <laughs> so, Deanna Perrazzo on the Busted Open Radio Show made her feelings known that she would like to face the AEW Women's Champion Sheeta or Thunder Rosa or, you know, her buddy Britt Baker. And I think, why not, right? Why not? That's new matchups. That will be good for everybody. There's really no lose. That's a win-win. It increases more, you know, it adds more... Um, it adds more, more teeth to this whole open door thing, right? I, like, because what this looks like right now is a basic talent exchange where it's like, hey, we'll give you the Good Brothers, you give us Kenny Omega, right? That's what it looks like in the much for the most part has been. Now, they they had Matt Hardy in Private Party, then they were supposed to have Sammy Guevara. Sammy messed that up and. You know, there hasn't been another AEW person other than Kenny Omega on Impact since then. So I don't know if that was the end of that. But Deanna Perrazzo's right. You know, she has established herself as one of the top women's wrestlers in the business. And so it can only benefit AEW 
to have someone like that appear on their show. And, you know, she certainly should not be going over there losing to anybody in AEW. Sorry. She should not. She should not be losing to Sheeta or Chris Statlander or Ty Conti or Nyla Rose or anybody else they got over there. Deanna Perrazzo is better than all of them. And if Deanna Perrazzo gets a chance to face a woman from AEW, they, Deanna Perrazzo should be the winner. So she's got, a, you know, the match coming up with Sunil Dashwood this week. You know, man, it's about as man as man could be. Couldn't possibly, you know, care much about that. But what's next after that? I think, you know, it adds a lot of entry. It adds a lot of entry. Um, one of the best moments that I like from this past episode of Impact was a promo from Brian Myers. Brian Myers has been wearing an, uh, an eye patch lately, just as like part of like a gimmick. And he's been doing this thing where he's been going back and forth with Matt Cardona, you know, who everyone really knows is Zack Ryder. And Brian Myers, you know, he basically just said, you know, he, he has a line where he's like, I can see clearly now, you know, like what I need to do. And he takes off the eye patch, um, which I hope was just to signal that he's not going to be wearing that stupid eye patch anymore. But he cut a good, serious promo on Matt Cardona. And when he wrestles Matt Cardona, he should win. Because Brian Myers has shown a whole other side to himself since coming to Impact. And he looks like someone who could and should be a, fe a feature player down the line. A lot of guys, you know, come to Impact from other places and they really don't show that, hey, the last company missed on me. But he has. Brian Myers has shown the, uh, you know, he's shown the character to really basically want to see him get punched in the face, right? Like, I mean, that's what it comes down to. It, to be a good heel, you have to make me want to see you get your ass beat. And he's done that. Congratulations. I want to see you get your ass beat, Brian Myers. And it's because he does a great job. He's a great heel. So, Brian Myers should beat uh, Matt Cardona. And, you know, they can have a great match. It can be close. Do as many near falls as you want. But, it should be clear when this is over that Brian Myers is winning and moving on to bigger and better things. What those bigger and better things are, I don't know. The other thing that we're looking forward to for sure is the X Division title. Um, so it's going to be TJP versus Ace Austin versus uh, Josh Alexander. I think this is Josh Alexander's time. I think it's his time. You know, Josh Alexander, again, he's one of the new faces that's that's getting a chance to shine. And he's got to get some wins. He's got to get some wins against some good players in some big spots. And so here's a big spot coming up on Sunday. Or, yeah, on Sunday that Josh Alexander should win. Josh Alexander, you know, Josh Alexander as the X Division champion. I think it would be good for him. I think it would be good for Impact. It would be something fresh. And it will be somebody who we haven't seen with the title. Right? Let's see what he's like as a champion. Where he gets, where we have to, you know, learn more about his character. We have to learn more about how he acts when he's fighting for something that means something to him. Right? This is a great chance for him to really develop his character and step up to the next level. I think Josh Alexander has the potential to be a headliner, right? A company headliner. But you got to do these things to, you know, get fans used to seeing what he looks like holding a championship and being a feature player. Um, one thing I didn't like from the show this past week was I did not like seeing Jake something lose to uh, Mahabali Shira with... Rohit Raju. Now, nothing against Shira and nothing against Rohit, but give me a damn break. Jake something, again, he's another one of those guys that looks like the, the cornerstone of your company going forward. I, I, to see, this is second week in a row 
getting pinned clean in the middle of the ring. And it's just not... Like, I don't know if they're going to do some sort of angle where he's fed up with losing and he's going to storm off and get a new attitude or something. But they keep beating this guy. It's going to be tough to build him up in the eyes of the fans. You know, he's a big powerhouse kind of wrestler. And guys like that, they're supposed to get the super Cena. You know what I mean? They're supposed to just run through people. And then they can hit some brick walls from time to time. But they shouldn't be, you know getting pinned clean in the middle of the ring so maybe this is all going somewhere but you gotta stop beating Jake something you gotta stop beating this guy if he's gonna be a big star for you cause he looks like he has every tool to be a big star he really does um what they do with him is gonna make all the difference so you know he needs to start picking up some wins here in the next few weeks all right, guys, so I'm, as I said before, recording this on my phone, so I didn't have a chance to get to your questions. So what I will do is I will go through some of the questions that were on the YouTube video uh, this past week, and I will get it, get another video out to you guys going through some of your questions, either that or I'll tack them on to next week's video. But I definitely, definitely, definitely will answer some of your questions that you sent in last week or respond to some of your comments that you sent into the video last week. Definitely drop your comments below this video. Make sure that you, you like it. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the notifications button so you know whenever we drop this hot fire content and share it, share it on your Twitters. Follow me on Twitter, at TW Talking About. Follow BQ, I'm sure you're already following BQ, but let's keep the keep the content going. Oh, one more thing I wanted to talk about. Mm. Eric Young put out a great tweet where he wrote in his notepad app about how much he enjoyed wrestling Eddie Edwards, and how this was a five-star match that he wrestled on a torn ACL. And I was like, okay, this is cool. But my thing is, when I watched the match, I'm not so sure if he delivered on that or not. But I want to hear from you guys on if they delivered. I don't need your star rating system. Please don't give me your star rating. I don't care about your star rating system. But do you think they delivered on a great match? Do you think that EY and Eddie Edwards match lived up to the way EY was hyping it on Twitter. Let me know. Sound off in the comments. Let me know what you thought about that match. Let me know what your predictions are for Rebellion. And like I said, follow me on Twitter, at TW Talking About. Let's keep the conversation going. Um, pass this along. Tell a friend to tell a friend. And yeah, thanks for tuning in. We'll see you guys after Rebellion with some reaction. Um, we'll definitely see you next week with another episode of the Cool Factor Pod. Um, follow BQ, follow myself, and yeah.